or cell is like a factory. Now inside the factory there are several machines producing its product and this product is going to the market and market has a certain demand according to which these machines are producing its product. Now inside of the cell also there are necessity of proteins in order to sustain the developmental the growth and also the physiological processes of a cell so that's why all the time DNA is going to RNA and RNA from RNA protein is made now in this process from DNA to RNA to protein the need is variable sometimes cell require one protein more than the other so all these processes of DNA to RNA or RNA to protein could be regulated as per demand and that's why regulation of transcription and translation processes are so important to understand in this video we would talk about transcriptional regulation just like a fan has its own regulator and turning the regulator we can change the fan speed a transcriptional machinery that means from DNA to producing mRNA also has regulatory mechanisms some regulatory mechanisms are trans regulatory mechanisms which are protein based or based on transcription factor binding and some are mediated by cis regulatory elements which are also present in the DNA nearby the gene or far away from the gene and I'm going to talk about those cis regulatory elements in this video and how they regulate transcription now here is a typical simplified diagram of a gene where yellow is the gene body and now the first regulatory element to talk about is a promoter now promoter is a short regulatory sequence just near to the gene body either at this and and where the RNA's polymer uh, uh, RNA polymerase to bind and transcription initiation happen for transcription to initiate at least a minimal promoter should be there Apart from promoter, there are other sequences known as enhancers. Enhancers could be both sides of the gene, either upstream or downstream, but they could be like as far away as in order of 3-4 kilobase pairs. And still, they can regulate the gene expression from a particular gene promoter and from the, uh, from the gene body. So how does enhancers work? Actually, the general transcription factors of TF2D family binds to uh, the promoter, the minimal promoter, and recruits POL2 in that uh, promoter. Now, upstream enhancer elements bind to specialized transcription factor. Specialized transcription factor can interact with cofactors. Now, these cofactors could be either co-repressor, or some cases these factors could be uh, coactivators. If it's a coactivator, these upstream enhancer sequence uh, undergoes a DNA folding mechanism such that these cofactors and uh, specialized transcription factor can in interact with this POL2 complex and thereby regulate the frequency of translation or how frequent or how sp what is the speed of the trans uh, transcription would happen. Now inside of the cell, the DNA is not free. So DNA is in form of a nucleosome uh, uh, arrangement. So here I'm showing a gene X and two enhancer of it, gene A and gene B. Even though gene B is pretty far away from this particular gene X, enhancer A and enhancer B, both of them has certain amount of influence on the expression of gene X. Now, I need to show you guys the different chromatin states of an enhancer. Enhancer is active when the enhancer is accessible to specialized transcription factors. That means the nucleosome is somehow translocated away from that en region, enhancer region. Now it could be also primed enhancer where the enhancer is accessible but not the transcription factors, the specialized transcription factors are just not bound. It could be also poised that could be opened or closed so bidirectional markers are there on in this state but exactly they are not accessible to the transcription factor right now but they could be modified in near future depend re, uh, depending upon the need of the cell now different enhancers could influence the gene in a differential manner depending upon which tissue they are present at for example 
inside a neuron let's say there are th there is an expression of gene x and gene x is very important for survival of the neuron so gene x is modulated by the enhancer a here but not by enhancer b but let's say we consider another cell intestinal cell and here we see a different scenario enhancer a and enhancer b both regulate the expression from gene x so depending upon the tissue the enhancers that regulate the transcription could be also different and that leads to the heterogeneity of gene expression in a tis in, in different tissues so have you ever wondered that how to identify this enhancer sequence now if you know a certain transcription factor that binds to this enhancer region then definitely you can pull down that uh, 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 pull down that with an antibody and then sequence uh, the region where it binds that would give you the enhancer sequence otherwise there are many other approaches bioinformatic approaches histone modification seeks chromosome confirmation capture based approaches and DNA seek all these things are there to find the enhancer sequences now how to understand that one enhancer is active and one enhancer is inactive or closed state so in an open state there are specific um, marks on the enhancer that tells us that it's in an open state which is very different from the marks present in a closed state so if you even look at the different histone modifications in a chromatin region which is a putative enhancer then we can understand okay the enhancer is there but what physiological state is it in is it a open state enhancer or is it in a closed state so in a closed state enhancer does not influence the gene expression from the nearby uh, promoter so that's why it's interesting to understand the open state and the closed state of a chromatin in my other videos i would be talking about enhancers in a lot more details so this is a basic overview of enhancers so if you like my video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you